In 1937, the first field action project of the School of Social Work was launched. The Child Guidance Clinic was a pioneering initiative that paved the way for a whole new area of intervention with children and their families. Now renamed Muskan, it has provided valuable services to generations of young people in difficult situations. Nineteen forty saw the publication of the very first issue of the Indian Journal of Social Work, which boasts of over seven decades of uninterrupted publication. Nineteen forty-eight, the aftermath of the partition. In the refugee camps were thousands of families requiring urgent help. TISS sent teams of students and faculty who worked in the refugee camps at Kurukshetra. That time, I was placed in a family camp, and what tragedies and what tragedies we saw! We couldn't believe it. We were crying, but even then we had to work hard, and we had to slowly comfort them. But that comfort was not adequate for them. Our work was extremely appreciated by the not only by the trustees but but by the government of India. And one good thing that this was considered as our field work experience, the best. And we still feel that yes, we gained a lot about the humanity problems and rehabilitation of the. Deserted and separated families. Many years later, when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru visited TISS, he recalled the work of this team. In 1949, the Tata Institute of Social Sciences shifted outside Bombay City to a more spacious campus at Andheri. In 1954, TISS shifted to its first permanent campus in Deonar. A large space on the outskirts of the city, its architecture is an unusual blend of the indigenous and the modern, designed by the noted architect Durga Bajpai. In 1964, TISS became a deemed university. With the deemed university status, the institute set about diversifying its program. In 1967, in response to the increasingly complex and specialized needs of the industry, the social work specialization in labor welfare and industrial relations developed into an independent master's degree program in personnel management and industrial relations. In its present avatar of an MA in human resource management, This is one of the most sought-after programs in the country. According to the Trade Union Act, any organization which employs 500 employees must have a statutorily qualified welfare officer. So our institute was recognized for that. At that time, trade unions were very strong, so industrial relations was very important. Afterwards, we had uh, little influence of American. Or Western, uh, you know, atmosphere. Uh, these multinationals started coming. The workforce also was of a different type, little educated, um, and so on. And then there was influence of those cultures quite a bit. So then people started thinking, oh, labor welfare means only labor welfare. You are not doing anything else. Changes started taking place. And instead of labor, they thought personnel is a proper word because personnel includes top to bottom. And I think after Rajiv Gandhi's era, it became human resource management or something of that. The nature of work, of course, has changed. So, in our teaching, we used to have emphasis on industrial relations and trade union movement and all that. Now, I think we speak more of this development of people, training needs, and those kinds of things.